Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at GameHub, an app made by the lovely people who make these GameSir controllers. And by far the simplest, easiest and quickest way to get Steam games on your Android device. I have made a tutorial about Steam games recently and while that one is great because it's all open source and trustworthy, this one is far easier. So I'm going to show you today just very quickly how to get this set up and we can all start playing some games on our Android phones or our Android handhelds. To get started all you need to do is search Google for the word Game Hub or I'll also include a link in the description to the official website here. We just then simply need to press this big Android download button to download the app. It will tell you it's downloading the file and once it's done we can just open it. Hit the install button and then open. We need to agree to the terms and conditions and we need to sign in with either our email, Google account or Apple ID. Some people don't really trust the company that makes this app. So if you're not feeling very trustworthy, I would suggest using the email option. And we do also need to agree to these conditions down here as well. So let's make sure that circle is nicely checked even if it takes quite a few tries to tap the tiny little circle. And let's hit email. You need to input a real email here so you can get a verification message. You will then be emailed a code you need to input here, just like you do with many other applications. And then we're going to need to allow quite a few permissions, which is where people think the app gets a little bit sketchy because they ask for quite a lot more permissions than they would really need. That's why I recommend using the email option because that way you've only given them your email address, but you haven't given them any passwords. If you choose Apple ID or Google, you're going to need to input your password into the app, which could be a little bit dangerous. But with the email option, you're not giving them any passwords. You're only giving them your email address, which in my view seems safer. So now we are in the app and what we need to do is come over to the My tab up here. So let's just tap where it says My and now you'll see various things like PC Link, PlayStation Link and ways to link this to other devices you might have. But the one we are interested in is of course Steam. So let's hit this Sign into Steam button. We can also use our controls for most of these things too. And you have the choice of entering your name and password or scanning a QR code. Once again, I would recommend scanning the QR code because in that situation, all the information they're getting is just a little token which expires once you use it anyway. So they're not actually gaining your password information as far as I'm aware. So open the Steam app on your phone, press the middle button which looks like a shield at the bottom of the screen, and then just scan the code to log in. My one actually didn't work there, so what you can do is tap the QR code to refresh it and give yourself another chance. That time it worked, I hit the sign in to Steam button on my phone and we are now logged in. It's going to show how many thousands of hours you've played on this particular account, how many games you have and how much your account is worth, which for some reason seems to be in Japanese yen even though I'm not in Japan. We can now just scroll down, look at our game library and start installing games. Let's say for example I want to install a nice small game, Papers Please. We just tap on it and then we just tap Get Game and it will tell you how big the game is and how much space you have left on your device. Because as far as I can tell right now, one limitation is it seems limited to only your internal storage. I've not found a way to use external SD cards yet. And if anybody does know how to do that, please let me know in the comments below. So I have 24 gigabytes left of internal storage. This game is a tiny little 86 megabytes. Let's hit install. And once again, we can also control all of this with the controls of the device as well. It will let you know the first time that you should keep the app open to download nice and quickly. Let's just hit don't show again, I know. And you'll see it downloading in about one second for this particular game. And we can hit play now. This is where it's going to ask you for lots of permissions like your exact location, Bluetooth and lots of things that make some people feel a bit uneasy. Let's hit enable for now and give the permission so it launches the game. I have heard some people say you can now go ahead and turn those off. You can turn on airplane mode or disable Bluetooth and it should work fine. GameHub is going to show some videos of the game you're installing just to keep you busy and happy while you're installing the game. And the great thing about GameHub is how it just downloads everything for you down here. You don't need to go through optimizing every shortcut like in WinLater. You can if you want to, 
but Game Hub's going to automatically download everything the specific game needs, which I think is where it really shines. Once it's finished installing, this is the familiar screen you'll see on Game Hub. Although it does seem to be giving me some problems right now. Let's hit the play now button now that everything's installed and hopefully we can get a nice smooth launch. I will say I've not encountered this issue before filming and this is just completely typical when you go to show somebody something and it doesn't work anymore. So what I'm going to do is close the Retro Pocket Flip 2 and let's bring on one I prepared earlier. This is my beautiful folding phone with the Snapdragon 8 Elite chip inside and I've installed all of these games to the internal hard drive. Not all of them are working well, some of them don't work at all. That's something we'll go into deeper in another video as I intend to compare this to the Snapdragon 865 and 8 Gen 2 as I did in my Switch comparison video. Please leave me a comment if that is something you'd like to see. And as this is Game Hub, Let's put it inside the GameSir controller, which is made by the same company who make this application. And let's jump into a few games to see how things are going. Let's start with a classic Skyrim, one that usually works on a lot of different devices. And as you can see here, it even says it has perfect support in Game Hub. So let's hit play now and you'll see this loading screen. I'll just use the on-screen control as a touchpad to get into the actual game through the Skyrim launcher and we should be ready to play. One thing I haven't really figured out yet is how to make Game Hub nicely fit this screen. But as you can see, we can continue from our cloud save on Steam. This is where this new version of Game Hub has really leveled up the previous versions. We were able to launch some of our Steam games before, but there was no cloud support, which made it kind of pointless. But now we have all of our cloud games. I'll just move the HUD up here so you can see the frame per second. And this little green line shows the frame per second over time. So if it's spiking up and down a lot, that shows that the frame rate is not consistent. What we want is like this, a nice straight line. So as I run around a little bit, you'll see a big frame dip there, but we are mostly above 30 frames per second. I would say this is a pretty nice experience. Of course, I would much prefer a solid 60, which we're not able to get right now. And while there were a few little glitches, it's going pretty nicely. I know for a fact there is a wolf around here somewhere, so let me just try to find that. Again, a few texture glitches going on with the lighting here, but I'm sure that's something that could be fixed by changing some of the settings, which we haven't even had to do. Ah, here comes the wolf. Here comes the wolf, na 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 na. Ever so sorry there, chap. So with absolutely no tweaking whatsoever, all I did was just download this game. I'm playing one of my Steam saves of Skyrim. And we should be able to quit the game and save it just like we would on a computer or a Steam Deck or anything else. Let's just get ourselves to somewhere memorable so we can make sure that it truly did save. Here I am in this lovely circle. Let's save the game here and let's quit to the desktop. Now we'll jump back into the game again and see if it has saved and synchronized our progress. This is the moment of truth. And we load in back in that circle again and it has synchronized our save. Happy days! There are a lot more games here I have to test, but I'm going to save that for my shootout video with the other chipsets. Let's just try another couple of games to see where we are. Let's try Dishonored, which is another one I like to test on these systems. You do sometimes need to load the game up twice. It very often doesn't launch the first time for some reason. So just be prepared to hit the launch button a couple of times. This is a game you can see I've been testing over the past few months. And before that, it was 11 years that I last played this game. I remember that I've just restarted the beginning level so many times because I think it's just really cool. And I'm not sure I've ever actually got out of this prison, which is only the first maybe few minutes of the game. I just find this opening part too fun, sneaking up on everyone. You know, let's do this. Leroy! <laughs> This is a lovely performer. We are dipping to around 30 FPS at times, but we're also getting a really smooth frame rate quite a lot too. My favorite game, Slay the Spire, wasn't working when I tried to load it, but I went through the game settings here and pretty much just changed all of them. I had no idea what I was doing. I just went through and changed the driver to the newest version. I changed the 
DXVK version, again to the newest version, and the VKD3D version to the newest version. And then I turned on skip audio video decode and changed the translation parameters from normal to extreme. And I'm not sure what setting made a difference. I was just blindly changing everything. But now that I did that, the game loads. So there clearly is some wiggle room we can do there. We do all need to come together with these compatibility reports to get everything working. And I'm also, by the way, working on a complete refresh of my website with an updated UI, which I'm really excited to share with you soon. So let's keep working on these compatibility reports, whether that's on my website or a website like MU Ready. Let's just all share with each other how to get these games working well. So with all of those settings changed, the game is now loading and it is launching. I have no idea whatsoever which settings made it work, but it is now working. Unfortunately, the frame rate is not particularly good, but it went from not launching at all to now launching and playing at somewhere around 40 frames per second and going up and down over time, sometimes being really slow, sometimes being really smooth. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but I'm just really happy that it's working right now. And I hope we can work together to make this work very, very well. So now it is your turn to jump into Game Hub, test some games, see what games you can get working from your Steam library, and let's help each other get them all working nicely. I would love to hear in the comments below what games you've got working well on Game Hub. It is now easier than ever to turn your Android device into a little mini Steam Deck and get lots of games working well from your Steam library. So I really encourage you to go jump in and play some Steam games on your Android device, whether it's a phone like this, a tablet or an Android handheld. I hope this video was helpful. If you would like to see it, I will release a full guide on Game Hub in the near future. I'm just waiting for it to stabilize a little bit because even in the past week, there has been about seven updates. Every single day, there's a new update for this. So once it seems to be stabilized, I'm going to make a full guide for Game Hub. So please stick around and check that out by liking and subscribing if you haven't already. That would really help me. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.